In last week's video, you watched me make this shape. In this video, I'm gonna make the silicone rubber blanket mold along with its urethane resin shell. It's also called a mother. Goes in there, fits like a champ. It's for rotational molding. Stick around, I'll show you how I did it. Here's our piece that we're gonna make. And here's the bottom piece of the mold that we're gonna attach it to. It's just a piece of scrap and it's the right size. And I'm, and I'm going to uh, ha have this piece of wood do two things at once. It's going to be both the bottom of the mold and the cradle that's gonna mount this to the uh, rotating machine. And the first thing I will do is make some tabs, which are gonna be right in here, right there, and right here, because this is this is, these are the attachment points for the rubber bands. To get it to fit onto the cradle of the uh, rotation machine, I'm gonna cut this piece, I think right about here, and uh, same thing on the other side, right about there, I marked it out. So that's gonna be the size of the thing. Let me go uh, knit these off on the table saw and we'll go forward. Okay, good. It's gonna mount on there like that. Nice and easy, except it's gonna be upside down like that when I get the part on there so that it makes kind of a cradly looking thing like that. It sits down in there a little bit better balance. And I'm gonna to have to cut a bung hole in the middle. I drilled out the bung hole in the middle that's gonna be where with the resin, we're gonna pour the resin into, this, into the mold. And then I just made these divots in the side to bring the rubber bands in closer. To make the cleats, I'm just gonna take coffee stirrers and glue them actually onto the bottom side like that. And that's the cleat that's gonna hold the rubber band. You're gonna see that in action shortly. So a little wood glue, a couple of coffee stirrers, instant cleatage. To make the cleats, I'm just gonna smear some tight bond onto these little sticks, onto these coffee stirrers. I mean, super easy. Just wood glue, Elmer's will do, whatever you got. You could hot melt. I like the wood glue, it's gonna be strong. It's gonna hold up. Okay, so now we just put them on there. And the nice thing about coffee stirrers is they're smooth, they're really smooth. You're not gonna have any issues with like splinters or sharp edges or something to cut your rubber bands. They don't have to stick out far, about like that. Just enough of a cleat to wrap a rubber band around. Let's go this way. That's all you need. A little more on this one. Done. Let's set those aside to dry. And now you see the little cleats. And while these have been drying, I cut the bung for the hole, the stopper, fits like a champ. Just use a plug cutter and a forstner bit. Put some glue, put some glue on there. I'm just gonna attach a little handle to my bung. So now I just have a little cap with something to grab a hold of so I can pull the stopper in and out between coats of resin. By the way, these folder clips, get them at the office supply store, are maybe the greatest invention in the history of mankind. They are one of my most used, most all-purpose, light-duty, small-part clamps. They're cheap and they work great. I use them for all kinds of stuff. I've got these parts all ready to wax. Little bung goes right in there. Nice. Just fits in there perfect, like that. Beautiful. All right, let's wax them up. Beeswax is nature's all-purpose mole release. Absolutely indispensable in my shop. I use it all the time. And if I'm gonna use a lot of it, I'll melt it in a big pot. But if I only need to wax up a small part like this, then all we need to do is uh, melt a little bit. So let's do that. And we gotta get the bristles of the brush hot, but not hot enough to burn the bristles. Just hot enough to melt the wax. And when it's all ready to go, I'll come back to you. I want to make sure I really wax the sides of the hole because that's where rubber could really stick. I want to make sure you get in there good. Really push wax in there. All right, this is pretty well waxed, just the way we need it. And so is the little bung, so we're all set. Now that the base is waxed, we can go ahead and attach the form. And I'm just gonna do that with a couple of blobs of sticky wax. I don't really want it stuck on there super hard because I want to be able to take it off later. So it's not gonna take much wax to hold it in place. There isn't much that's gonna loosen it anyway. <clears throat> so that should do it. However, I do want to seal around the edges. So I'm gonna do that with more wax. 
And to do that, I'll use uh, sprue wax because it flows really well into the seams. I'll go ahead and wax it up. And that's simple enough. You just go around all the way around, make sure that the edges are sealed up. And I'll clean it up a little and we'll get that done. Last little bit down here at the tail. Should get that done. There you go. Now it's completely waxed all the way around. And I would just go around and scrape it a little bit here and there. Clean up if there's any little blobs like right here on the side. No biggie. Let's just scrape it off. Now no rubber is going to leak underneath there and make a nice clean edge all the way around. So that will work out fine. I dispensed out some rubber. Let's mix it up. We're going to make a, uh, not a pouring rubber, but a uh, layup rubber. <clears throat> meaning a rubber that will stay in place when we apply it. And in order to do that, we're going to take our regular pouring rubber and add some polyethylene fiber to it. And that will thicken it up. This stuff is super fine, plastic powder, and that will cause it to get thicker. You have to mix it thoroughly, otherwise you will have problems. staying in place pretty well, but it is still sagging, and I don't want it to sag much. So I'm going to put a little more in there, see if we can get a rubber that doesn't sag too much. Now you can get rubbers that are specifically for layup, and that would be a good plan, but I don't want to go out and spend more money on rubber I've already got. So, because rubber is expensive, and uh, as we know, the whole point to this exercise is to make a mold with an absolute minimum amount of rubber, because it is expensive stuff, and we don't want to waste it and we don't want to use too much of it. We want to make, use just enough rubber to make a good mold. I'm going to apply the rubber with an inexpensive acid brush, and I want to start on one side, and I sure don't want to trap air bubbles, so I'm going to be very, very careful to push out, especially down along the seam, push out air in front of the brush and not allow any bubbles to lay against the side of the pattern. Now the thing is that this is a really smooth model, which makes it easy. Doing this is easy because of its, how smooth it is. If you had a model with a lot of surface detail, you would want to uh, pay close attention when you put your layup rubber on there, <clears throat> that you're getting into all the details and into all the little surface imperfections and divots and all that stuff. You do not want to catch bubbles in your print coat, in the first coat at all. That, is, that would be bad. So I'm taking real care to push the rubber along the seam, which is the place that I would be most likely to catch a bubble on this project, is right along here on the edge. Don't want it. Because if you catch a bubble, all that means is you've got a flaw in your casting and you've got to fix it. And you got, don't have to fix it once, you have to fix it with each subsequent casting. You'll duplicate the flaw in every casting, and that just is something you just don't want to have happen to you. Again, the whole point to this is we want to make a mold with an absolute minimum of rubber. Okay, let's mix up the second coat. I think this mold is only going to require two coats. But this coat will be quite a bit thicker than the first one. I Plan to trowel it on. And get out the mini fibers. Still a tiny bit of sag. So let's put a little more mini fiber in there. I think that's going to stay put. Let's find out. As you can see, the first coat of rubber sagged a little, but I think it's a pretty decent coat. And uh, it'll be easy enough to trim off later, so no biggie. Now let's get this second coat laid on here. And this is really a trowel-on coat. The mold is plenty thick down around the base. I just want to thicken up the sides and the dome. You want a mold to be as thin as possible, but to hold its shape. It can't be floppy. If it's flopping around like an empty balloon, that won't work. It's got to be rigid enough to hold its shape. But at the same time, use the absolute minimum of rubber because rubber is so expensive. So 
You, know, you really want to go cheap on the old rubber. Okay, done. We're ready to put a hard plastic shell on this rubber mold. And the first thing we're gonna do is hit the thing with parting agent. Uh, that way we know the plastic isn't gonna bond to this rubber. Not that it would, but really the major reason to do it is just simply to make sure that uh, it's easy to pry off. So let's go ahead and hit this thing. Now, the shell material is going to be a urethane resin. Release. Love our parting agent. Makes life a lot easier. Okay. Don't need a lot, just a thin, thin film. It's made of a part A and part B. It's a 50 50 blend. This particular kind of plastic mixes really liquidy, as you can see, but then it turns into a sludge, it turns into like caramel. See how caramely it is, how it sticks and clings? Exactly what you want because we're gonna spackle this stuff on. We spackle it on just like this. And we're gonna make a hard plastic shell, which is gonna work out great. I don't like the bottom edge to be sharp, so I tend to beat it up on the bottom edge. So the bottom edge stays nice and blunt. Has a kind of a bead of plastic on the bottom. Just kind of push the plastic to the edge. And that makes a really nice plastic bottom edge. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. It just has to support the rubber and evenly press it on there. So we just work our way around, <clears throat> keep going. Keep building that edge around the base. Obviously this is gonna be a very form fit cover, a very form fitting shell which is exactly what you want and what you need. I want it to be fit really well to the, to the mold. And it will be, it'll be perfect. And a small mold like this, you're not gonna have to build up a lot of layers. It just won't need it. It's gonna be strong enough uh, in a small amount of using a small amount of plastic. Looking good, I think it's a little thin on top. So we're gonna give it one good goober on the top. <clears throat> Since I have the plastic, we'll build up a nice thick ridge on the top and that is going to do it. If you can frost a cake, you can use this stuff. Kind of the same drill. I'll just go around and make sure I feel like I've got all the low spots filled in. I think that's gonna work like a champ. I think we're done. I just pulled this thing out of the hot box. And it's looking good. Shell's nice and tight. Of course, now the question is, can we get the shell off? Woo, came right off. Look at that. Nice. That. Ladies and gentlemen, is why we love our ease release so much. So there was no doubt as to whether or not that was kind of come off. Now you can see it kind of oozied over a little. I would like to cut that off of there if I can. Just follow along down here. Cut along the edge. So we don't need all that extra rubber. Will that peel off? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, do that on the other side. Cutting along the edge. Get rid of the excess rubber. That way we can clearly see our cleats sticking out, looking good. They're gonna wrap right around here. Let's see how we did. Very exciting. Love to pull molds out. What I'd like to do is get the thing to come off. It did in fact come off, look at that, nice. And now, let's see how we did. Pretty nice, pretty nice. All right, beautiful. Now it's floppy, but it'll hold its shape. You know, let's go ahead and trim this rubber off. Should be able to do that easily enough. We don't want anything sticking up. Because remember, this part is very much a part of the mold. When I assemble this mold, it's gonna sit on there like that. This piece is ready to go, so let's get it mounted onto the cradle. It's literally going to be two screws that are gonna hold the thing in place, nothing more than that. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Now that is all the attachment that that piece is gonna require. Now we can get this mounted on here. Okay, so now we just need to get our rubber bands going. And this is uh, where these handy dandy cleats come in. Just come around and cleat those things on. And they hold on almighty. Rubber molds really like rubber bands. And all different colors of rubber bands. Here we go, it's kind of green one. Okay, let's get this rubber band on. And you can see how those cleats work. And it's surprising how effective they are. And what you can also do is you can extend your rubber bands, of course, by making them longer. And that way you can crisscross them like that. It is going to work. There's our bung to fill the mold with. And uh, yeah, it's gonna work like a champ. I got the mold mounted onto the machine and the rubber bands are doing a perfect job of holding it on there. So it's ready to spin, ready to make parts. So next week we're gonna be making a bunch of castings out of this mold. And from those castings, we're gonna make several little characters. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. And I'll see you next week. And then we'll fire this little machine up and make some castings.